Yo, what's going on, everybody? Energy here. Uh, I know you guys are probably watching episode 31 right now, and you're probably wondering why did 32 come out before? Well, that's because we actually recorded previous before quarantine started. So as you know, everything got put on a hold, but we're back to provide you guys with that energy. And I hope you guys enjoy episode 31 with my boy, Eric Harris. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Podcast. My name is Brian Landeros, and alongside me is my co-host, Marcos Lopez, a.k.a. Papi Chulo. Guys and girls, if you haven't already, stop what you're doing right now. Go ahead over to the Energy page, follow us, then click the YouTube page, subscribe, and then from there, go on to Apple or Spotify, and make sure you subscribe as well, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, the goal is to reach as many people as possible, and we cannot do it without the Energy Gang help. Gang, gang, gang. All right, guys, let's get into today's guest. All right. Coming all the way from Shaker Heights, Cleveland, some of you know him as DJ E. Thick. Others known him as Gordo. Many of him known him know him as your veteran realtor, and everyone knows him as Eric Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, my boy, my friend, and my realtor partner, Eric Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on, bro? Welcome. <laughs> what's up, bro? <laughs> oh Shaker. wait, and if I if I. I, f I didn't almost forget. I almost had to disown you. Dude, fun fact right here, shaker. guys. This guy was best friends with Kid Cudi growing up in Shaker Heights. You don't believe me? I didn't either. I didn't either. But hey, Yo, he, I'm not he don't lie. To go home no more. <laughs> shaker Heights, guys, shouts out. Holy crap. Hey, I don't even know where Shaker Heights is at, to be honest. I, oh, he's I, not? No. No, I'm not from Shaker Oh, you're Heights. not from Shaker Heights? No. <laughs> Like, I'm finna go home and get disowned now because you're telling people I'm from Shaker. Okay, bro. Well, anyways, good thing we got you on the podcast today so you can explain where you're from. <laughs> All right, bro. Oh, wow. So, uh, I mean, we're only like, what, five hours late to this podcast? No big deal, bro. No yeah. big deal. Five hours um, late. Yeah, couple that's days. That's fine. You know. no, oh, a couple things. days, actually. Yeah, you're right. Holy crap. Probably a week, no? right? Yeah, because he kept going on vacation. Like, uh, bro. You know what? Let's just get into that right away, bro. How does it feel to be rich? <laughs> Pretty damn good. <laughs> Pretty damn good that I'm not rich. <laughs> He's like, what's up with all this? What's up with all I wouldn't these be working. Nah, but uh, yeah, bro, how was the donating blood today? I see you took off your little wrap. Uh, that's pretty good. You know, you get to help people out. Uh, you donate plasma. Oh, it's plasma. The, yeah, it's like a blood. plasma screen? Yeah, they they take the blood out, oh. take the plasma from the blood, and put the pla mm, uh, blood back in. Right. And uh, they do stem cell. Uh, stem cell research and all the other types of things with it cool so you just gave your blood away hopefully you know they find something that they could cure the coronavirus maybe yeah and then i can go back to japan where i like to hang out dude that's true huh yeah Look. like I, I they might be uh, canceling the olympics no way yeah, yeah. Dead, dead ass. why because of the coronavirus because of the coronavirus. they got the, the second uh top in yeah. a number of cases in the world right now yeah. japan japan yeah. holy crap they have they're, three months to decide. yeah they're closing down schools Jesus Christ, ladies next, and gentlemen, next, yeah. this is a fucking Next huge week, thing. they'll yeah. be closing down all their schools. Um, one of my friends told me it's starting off in Osaka, Japan, down south. Damn. That's crazy. Hey, no, but honestly, yo, yeah, the coronavirus thing is, is nothing to take lightly. Uh, make sure you just, you know, you're aware of what's going on. And uh, just because it's not happening to you directly doesn't mean it can't happen to you. But definitely just be on aware and just, you know, be cautious and uh, have compassion towards people that you know actually take that serious because you never know when uh you might go through some shit like that and nobody wants to lose a family member nope. or anyone that they love bro exactly. no, no. so yeah no definitely it's always fun and games but when it's real it's real guys yes. but anyways uh let's move on a little bit after that jesus why wow, where to start a podcast huh <laughs> <laughs> hey, people got well informed of what's nah, going yeah, on yeah, yeah. i'm glad now. everybody uh, you know yeah. paying attention all right cool but bro let's get into a little short bio of who you are before we get into you know this whole uh you know shebang Oh. Yeah, let's let's start with where you're actually from. Sorry about that. <laughs> so whoever did my notes, me, yeah. I guess got him wrong. Huh? I got Marcos, the DJ what the name wrong, here, everything, you know. So first off, uh, Eric Harris, he got that right. Yeah, right. Um, I'm actually from Maple Heights, Ohio. Oh, but it is a Heights. Yeah, it is okay, a Heights. Got it. But, At least uh, I got some it's, part it's of it. It's a suburb right? of Cleveland. Oh, uh, okay. So I just tell people I'm from Cleveland because nobody knows Maple Heights, just like you don't know Shaker. I do. Oh, 
Yeah, because yeah, you're special. Yeah, shaker, ass fool. <laughs> Fool's a shaker. <laughs> Nobody likes shaker. Nobody, bro. Um, Not even Kid Cudi. That's why he moved. Mm, mm. Yep. Mm. He says Cleveland. He doesn't say I'm from shaker. He doesn't say shaker is a reason. Mm. <laughs> no, it's Cleveland nope, on it's the Cleveland. reason. 216. The land. Oh, shit. Uh... So how'd you feel about LeBron leaving the Cleveland uh, Cavaliers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I know. Like he's like an expert in Cleveland. Um, actually, I feel like the first time he left, he needed to. Otherwise, he wouldn't win a, a championship. He wanted to answer the question. The second time, really didn't care. Mm. What about the third time? Third time, yeah, he's never coming back. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. You know, he's cool. in the, with the Lakers. Would you leave the Lakers to go to Cleveland? Mm -mm. Yeah, you would. I wouldn't leave Cleveland because you said I was from Shaker. You don't know anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode 31. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, other than that, uh, what's that? I DJ, my name is DJ IME. Oh, bro. Yeah, well, I know. You're I don't, I don't, time, don't know why we're friends. Um, Me either, bro, but I love it. <laughs> but uh, I stepped away from DJ and focused more on real estate and uh, trying to build up my uh, career there. Mm -hmm. I'm actually putting a team together now. So that I can be rich and travel the world now. Oh, wow. Uh, now you're just kind of, oh, that must be nice. But I thought mm -hmm. you're rich already since you just came back from vacation like the other day. Yeah, I go on vacation every three months. It's must called budgeting, nice. though, you know? Yeah, I know. Which actually ties in right into uh, not the next subject, but. No. <laughs> no, but I, what I did want to uh, discuss with you is, bro, you had a military background, right? Yep. And now you're in real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, what was it like going from military lifestyle to now transitioning into, you know, the actual real world? Uh, for me, it was easy. Um, okay. I know a lot of people might have a hard time with it because it's like you get the shock of not having a uh, regular steady paycheck with uh, BAH. Yeah, BAH. And, and you're BH. actually out here working. That's supposed to be nice. Yeah. Mm. Without the extra money, you have to pay rent without it. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I, I, I plan to get out. So the transition was easy. And then it, it helps, you know, going from a structure like that where you have to be in on time and do everything. Mm -hmm. To, to to an entrepreneur job like real estate where you have to be reading your paperwork over and over, dotting your I's and T's. You got to do the same thing in a military. I was a what they call a CDI. Right. So I was uh, in charge of inspecting all the airplanes after we did work on them. Right. So making sure that our airplane goes up and that it's working is just as important as checking this paperwork for this client. Right. Who's buying a house? It's like one of the biggest transactions in their life. Definitely. So I don't, I don't want to mess that up. Just nope. like I'm not trying to mess up this airplane because it could take away somebody else's life. Mm. So either mess up your finances, mess up your life. Yeah. You don't want to do none of the that. The things so you don't want to mess around with. The military no, definitely, definitely helps you transition into an entrepreneur type job, and it can it can help you transition to any job just because of the, the structure and the discipline that you have mm. to have. That's crazy, yeah, because I honestly, sometimes for me, I have to, like, strain myself out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's tough because a lot of people deal with that, you know, and it's uh, it's more of a habit type of thing. I feel like, you know, you got to get the right habits in order for you to be disciplined, so it goes hand in hand. Exactly. And I feel the military does an amazing job at having you work on discipline, structure, and habits because it's a lot of repetitiveness, a lot of stuff that you just got to continue doing every day. You do the same thing every day. You walk in, check tools. Go to the pass down, get the information you got to do, go to work, go back to pass down, go home, start all over again. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, and then all over again. So moving on to music and DJing, bro, I know you said that you put a stop on that to focus on real estate, but I wanted to ask you, like, where did the passion for music and how did you want to go into that and where are you going with that now? Oh, uh, my passion, well, it all started with a white, uh, what's that, stereo system? Mm. With a purple and green record button, and back when I was five years old, okay, uh, my sister was teach me about music. She used to uh, videotape all the MTV videos on VHS when they actually showed up uh, music uh, videos. Yeah, and music back on in the day, MTV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had all the great I remember videos. Remember about that? Yeah, TRL. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, so that's a good one. Yeah. It, it started with that, and then uh, my favorite song ever, uh, "If I Ever Fall in Love Again" by Sha. So I grew up with '90s R&B. Can 90s you? Uh, I, I don't know that song. Can you just sing a yeah, short nah, part of it? Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually used to sing that back in high school to this girl. <laughs> oh, what is it called? Is it because the one I have in mind that mm -hmm. I think is that song? Uh, let me hear you sing it. 
And if I if I ever fall in love. Oh wait, no, never mind. That is Shit. exactly the song. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly the song. It's, I if will I ever fall make in love. sure that the lady's a friend. That is the song. Yo, that was dope. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was so hesitant about it. I was like, if I don't get it right, I'm gonna sound like a complete idiot. <laughs> I mean, you sound terrible singing it, but yeah, that's, that's the right song. You know, that's, why, that's why I always tell people, good thing you're good at what you're good at, because you're definitely not good at what you're trying to be good at. Yo, but. The fact that you spot on with that song, it makes up for Carl Tyler from Shaker. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> I just gave my points back, bro. And I honestly, the only reason why I know that song is because uh, one of my best friends, shout out Eric Vega, and his older brother, Eddie Vega, and Tony Jefferson that plays for uh, over at uh, Baltimore with the Ravens, mm-hmm. him and Eddie Vega basically made a remix to that song mm. when they were in eighth grade and I was like freaking like sixth grade and I listened to that thing and I was like, yo, this song slaps. Yo, that 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 was the first song I ever ever remember and it is my favorite song of all time. There's not a song that I know that could top it. Dude, that yeah, the, that's what I'm telling you. I don't even know how I know, but that melody is what like, did it for yeah, me. Either you listen to the acapella or you listen to it with a beat. Yep, it just so rides. Right. So right now I'm going to take a little bit of time to say, yo, Eddie Vega, Tony Jefferson, you guys need to go find that song and post that shit because, hey, all these years later, I still remember it. Yo, they'll get hella likes. Dude, they would. And then, dude, like, the, just that guys, what are we doing here? Remakes that song, covers that song. As long as you hitting them notes, you're going on to something. Yeah, especially that one at the end. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> like nobody hits notes like that no more. Nope, 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 nope. But you know, all right. So now let's transition into real estate, bro. Real estate, yeah, let's go. So all right, bro. So we're at we're, we're at that boba right now, and you're, if I'm not wrong, you're millennial, right? Technically, yeah. Technically, yeah, because yeah. you know I'm, the range, the spectrum. I'm, I'm not at the beginning of the millennial age. No, but you're you're well on the other side of the millennial age, right? Because I I think I'm the start of the millennial age. What's the What's the start? I don't know, Marcos. Can you look it up? Well, you're what, 31, 30? No, I'm 34. I'll be 35. Shit. Well, yeah, you're at the start of the millennial. I think it's yeah, oh, well, I'm yeah, the, start. I'm at the end. Sorry, yeah. I was looking at it back. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think 86, 85 is like the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah 85, I'm at the start. So, all right, what's your, what's your take on the market right now? Like, what do you think is going on? Or how do you see the market for that matter? You mean the, the, the real estate, estate market? market? Yeah, yeah. Yo, the real estate market is booming right now. Like, if you are not trying to buy a house right now with interest rates being low, mm. you're missing out. Like, and that, especially a first time home buyer, yeah. you want your interest rate to be lower. Too many people are worried about the price. You mm. need to be worried about the interest rate. If you get a low interest rate, you actually saving more money over the long period of time. People are too worried about short money. Yeah. It's an investment. It's a long term game. <laughs> and then if you put in small amounts like say you here, you put a hundred uh, extra dollars a month, mm-hmm. your interest rate over the next 30 years is actually would be like uh, one whole percent lower. Yeah. And the reason, the, the, yeah, yeah, the reason why he does that is because you're actually paying more on your principal every month, which means the money that should be going to the interest is actually going to be less because you're paying off the principal way faster because of that extra payment. Exactly. So Life hacks, guys. If you say you have a 3.5, these are just yeah. estimated numbers, right? Right, 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 right. And I put a hundred dollars every month over the next 30 years. My actual interest rate was probably a 2.11 something yeah. like that it's, it's called the effective interest rate and you know what i wanted to like talk about was like it's like the mindset that people have towards buying a house more than anything yo the mindset of people buying a house is i just made a video on this yeah yeah that's why the, I asked. the first thing that they think about is oh this house is five hundred thousand dollars nine times out of ten you're not even gonna pay that no and then this is the other one the myth that i always get all the time is like oh my god 30 years i'm gonna have to be stuck for this house with 30 years i'm like guys like you, you don't understand that you could refinance in the first two freaking in the first year you could re, like sell your house in the next year Yo, like i got people scared to refinance because we put the closing costs on there but they end up still saving more money by adding money onto their house. And they don't understand that the interest rate is what's holding them down. If yeah. it's a higher interest rate, of course you're going to pay more. I got a, a, a guy who's scared to refinance because he's like, I don't want to put 15000 back on the loan. I'm like, but you would knock off probably 20000 Exactly. putting 15000 on. And he did, because the numbers are in front of him, or even with the numbers in front of him, right. so say, because it's short term, he doesn't understand it. No, yeah. And that's the thing. People get so caught up in the big numbers that they forget to actually do the information mm-hmm. and tally up their information and make sure that it actually does make sense at the end of the day. But people like to, you know how I say this, they like to go based off headlines. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, hey, I'm going to look at the headline. That's what it is. So, shit, that's that's what, that's what's true. That's what's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, this house is $500,000. Really? It's not. It's how much are you paying a month? 
Because you live your life monthly. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, even in that, for like a 500000 you're probably looking at a payment of like 3000 more or less. At the most. You know what I mean? And it's just, you know, like sitting down and actually taking the step to know what it is you want to do, how much you want to pay, and then just figuring it out. But if you just scared and say like, no, it's not for me, then how are you supposed to ever know? Yeah, because like, say you live in Chula Vista, right? Mm-hmm. 500000 probably about 3000 Yeah. You yeah. live in Spring Valley, that same 500000 2700 a month. Yeah, and then I mean, over here living in the East Lake area, you have a lot of HOA Melrose since it's a new, new community or newer community. I mean, that right there, you tack on another two hundred or three hundred bucks, You're you know, on for minimum. The, sh- the streets, the lights, the good schools, the all the trees, the, plazas, the pretty flowers, yeah, everything, everything that's yeah. over here. Because like what you you tell me all the time, truly, this is a trap. Yeah, it is a trap because you li- and then a lot, a lot of people are gonna think like, yo, it's a trap. No, it's the nicest place I've been in, in like San Diego yeah. for the most part. Some of them, no, bro, it's a trap because they have everything you need out here. You do not need to leave Chula Vista. Ye- I call it a mini uh, military base. Yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. And then given that we are full of military all around here, yeah, because yeah. this is where everybody comes to live. Yeah, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, dude, like you live in this community, you have more than like five schools within a five mile radius. You got like three, seven, three to seven like shopping plazas. You got restaurants all over the place. Like, yo, like you really don't have to leave. Movie theater, Movie, gas station, yeah. anything. The only thing you missing is the beach, and the beach is thirty minutes away tops. You know, if that. But yeah, I know. It's just I don't know. I feel like it's a barrier where people from their past experience, maybe from the schooling that they had at home, they weren't, you know, fully educated on how to buy a house or even like, you know, think about buying a house. Yeah, but that that stems from, like you said, growing up, like not a lot of people bought houses back then. Everybody Mm -hmm. was scared to buy houses because actually their interest rates were like 19%. Bro, right now people don't understand that the interest rates are at the all time lowest for like the past 50 years. Up. Lifetime, like, like this, this is the, the lowest, lowest they've ever been. been in the country, dude. It's ridiculous. You, you like, you can borrow no money. Lower. You're not. You're never gonna be able to borrow money for this cheap. No, like, that's crazy. How, how how can you get lower than three percent? You bite down your points, but you know, <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but yeah, I mean, talk about the home buying process. So we start by getting pre-approved, right? They come to me. I make sure I write down all their finances, basically tally up all their debts, make sure that I tie them with the, with the, you know, payment and a mortgage that's going to be you know, around what they're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And then they go out shopping and I'm going to go ahead and take it off to you. Pre-approval. Make sure you get a pre-approval. That's why I go to Brian because they do pre-approvals, not pre-qualifications. Nope. Just the emphasis on that. It's very yeah. important. Look it up. <laughs> After they do all that, we go shopping. You find a house. We put in an offer. You get you get your offer accepted. Do a home inspection. Ask for repairs, depending on any, what's wrong with the house. Yeah, yeah, as far as like safety issues, because California's a buy as is state, but they will take care of safety issues because if they don't, more than likely it's not going to go back yeah. on the market. Nobody's going to buy it. It's the same safety issues. And then after that, you get your uh, termite inspection. Get that mm-hmm, taken care mm-hmm. of. You get your loan approved. You're Bam. closing. It's like a five step process. Bam, bam, bam. It's easier than buying a car. The, the hardest part is finding a home and getting your offer accepted. After that, it's just, yeah, we do the home inspection. Okay, fix this. All right, we're close. And I wanted to ask you a question, bro. So I've been reading a lot of articles, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, what I've noticed is that our generation has a big struggle with creating a budget. Oh. You know what I mean? And we... we Oh, that's why people think I'm rich now. You know what I mean? And that's exactly why I give you a hard time about yeah. it because you're really good at budgeting your money and knowing how to allocate it to right, you know, right places and not just over splurging and, you know, wasting your money. The first, the reason I started to budget was because I was struggling trying to figure out how I was going to pay for college. Mm. And my uncle told me something very important. You will always be in debt. The problem is people are scared of debt. Yeah. And they're scared of credit cards. Right. I have a friend, he won't go get a credit card because he said, I'll be in debt. The credit card doesn't put you in debt. You do. (laughs) If you use the credit card. Now you're in debt. Now you're in debt. But But you used it. But you used it. Not the credit card. (laughs) But if you don't use it, are you in debt? Nothing happens. So all you're basically telling me is you're not disciplined. For the most part, you know what I like to call a credit card? A leverage card. You know what I like to call a credit card? Vacation. All right, we're done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, because it's, 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 it's a simple process, because yeah. the thing about the world, or you, the USA, I should say, is set up for you to be rich. Yeah. Pe- people don't believe that. So if you have good credit, which you need credit cards for, mm-hmm. to get established good credit, 
uh, all you have to do is make the monthly payment, and you'll stay above. You may put a little bit more than the limit, therefore, you know, you, don't, you can beat, off, beat the interest and pay it off a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. So what I do is, since I have good credit, I can get a credit card that's no interest for a time period. Mm-hmm. So at the end of every year, I look for one of those cards, I apply for it, figure out what the limit is, then I go buy my vacation, Mm. I go buy Christmas presents and everything I need, all the very important stuff, up to that limit, right? Yeah. On a a credit card I already have. And then I move. Balance transfer? The balance (laughs) to the one with the one with uh, no interest for the next 18 months. Right. And then I put, I just start paying that one off. And this one, this one's clear. Yeah, yeah, because you mean you've transferred everything. The crazy part is, my net worth went up, which nobody knows what net worth is, which is crazy. Mm. What is net worth? Your net worth is how much money you can use for credit. Basically, the difference between how much you have in your credit limit and the equity in your home mm-hmm. versus your debt. Okay. So say you have it's like a life debt to income ratio. Yeah, so yeah. I have debt to income ratio. So. Uh, if you have the more credit money you have on the credit limit, the higher your credit score would be because yeah. it's about revolving credit first. That's the number one thing. Yep. And then if you constantly go on a vacation, like I go on vacation every three months because I plan it out. I'm budgeting out. Yeah. I, I make sure that my monthly payment, because you get paid every month, is not higher than my debt. Mm. And I do that and make sure all my credit cards are paid. And yeah. that's all you do every month. And that's smart. I mean, like the way that you look at it, you're looking at it as a, as a financial tool rather than like, hey, let me go just get, rack up all my freaking credit cards with my, uh, with money and then I'll just pay it off. Yeah, because a lot of people, they strategic think they're, about it. They're scared of credit cards because most people go buy TVs yeah. that they don't need. And then they don't know about the, oh, if I, most of my credit cards are uh, frequent flyer my cards. So, I mean, what, what, what I'm hearing you say is basically like use debt to make money. Yeah. You know, so every, leverage. Everything that you pay for should pay for two things. Mm. So most of my credit cards are frequent flyer mall cards. So what you I would say do is find out the airline you like. Yeah. Get a credit card from them, right? Sorry, go. Oh, you, you switch all your bills yeah. that you can to that card. Now, I just take the money that I normally pay because everybody pays with their debit card anyway, which yeah. is technically a credit card. Right. And I put I pay everything with the credit card and then put the money. To the credit card. So it's easy to like, it's basically taking your money, but using somebody else's money and then right back paying it with your money. And I get the points. There's no extra interest yep. because I'm paying the card mm-hmm. off before the interest hits. Right. And I'm still within my budget because I'm spending the same money that I would spend anyway. People think if I swipe this credit card, I'm in debt. You pay the card off. You're not, you're not in, in debt. debt. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think it's just like, you know, letting people know this information because if they don't know, then they go based off, you know, those those myths, that mindset, and those headlines that people, you know, don't actually know. It's not always facts and it's just, you know, per se, per se. Per se. And then when you get your frequent fire mile call, yep. you use the points to buy the airplane tickets for your vacation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's giving you guys facts you on how a, to go on vacation. A free flight. Let's say you're taking your girl. You might be able to get one of the tickets there for free and back, and you pay for the other one. Now you got a free ticket by paying your bills <laughs> using the money that you already used. That's how you double dip. Damn, ladies and gentlemen, come on now. Like, dude. Oh, I got a new hack. Oh, shit. Let it, lay it on us. If you do not have a gas card, a credit card for the gas station that you go to, you're wrong. They charge you an extra eight to ten cent for using a credit card, and most people use their debit card at the gas station. They don't go. Yeah, either way, I always get charged like thirty nine cents fee for uh, using this card. Yeah, because if you if you they have to sign up. It says if you pay cash here, Mm -hmm. and they're the price if you pay cash here, and if you buy a a a car wash, you get twenty cent less. But the credit card, if you swipe it, I automatically get the ten cent back off. Oh, so it's and like then, a reverse effect. Yeah, it's the reverse <laughs> effect. So it's, I'm saving the ten cent that they're charging me for using the car, yeah. and then every now and then, like the last time I used it, I saved a dollar twenty per gallon. There you go. You're freaking over here life hacking yeah. away, bro. So this is like it pops up. Every, sometimes it'll pop up thirty cents save. Sometimes fifty cents save. It's just like every now and then, it's just boom. And then I'm like, 
Oh, to save extra money while everybody else is spending extra using their regular car. And I'm gaining, baby. And that's how you budget life. Bro, so I've been seeing you so excited, like, down here at uh, on your desk. And mm-hmm. uh, you're always like, or you're always posting as well, you know. Um, um, and a lot of people will look at it like, what's Eric doing with all these graphs? Like, what is this? What does this mean? It goes up. It goes down. There's so many numbers. Like, what is this? Bro, what are you, what are you doing? I am what you would call trading. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am a day trader. Nice. Uh, there's two day, two types of day traders that I know about. Well, three. You got the Bitcoin traders. You got the foreign exchange traders or Forex. Mm. And then you got stock traders. I started out in stocks, but I actually found I like Forex better because you can buy or sell. Okay. Stocks, you only can buy. So when they sh- you, can, you can short it too, but you need a broker. That's yeah. So a whole different type of thing. Don't worry about that. Just learn how to trade. Read the books. So where would you say uh, people could find information about trading, or what would you suggest them to? Where to start? To be honest. Oh, um, dang! What is this guy's name? Is on YouTube is where I started. Okay. Yeah. YouTube need, University, baby. YouTube University is always the best place to start yeah. anything because you need to do your research. Uh, there's a book called Forward Exchange, or there's another book called Day Trading, and then there's a book called Swing Trading, because there's two types of trading. Swing trading is when you hold stuff longer than a day. Okay. Day trading is when you get in during the day and you get out. You can do it a number of times. Okay. Um, but the two biggest things in finances are real estate and trading. That's why I do both. Right. And if you don't do both. You got to find something. <laughs> look. Our parents could work a nine to five, or well, I should say our grandparents could yeah. work a nine to five and take care of eight kids. Like my grandmother had eight kids. Her sister had but 11. But then I'll rebuttal that one because cost of living was much less. This is this is what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting at. Back in the day, working a nine to five, you could do that. Now, you need to work. Both parents had a job is what our parents have to do. Now, it's like you need three jobs per person. To get for that's anything six out here. jobs right there. Yeah. That yes, three. Says, Fuck, that's too much, bro. Uh, Where, yo, where'd your time go? You, no time to do anything, and then you don't vacation till you retire when you're sixty. But that's what I like. I feel like we're in a in a spot in our generation and in life where there's so many tools out there to find a financial freedom route or there's something else to give you a little residual income. Right. You know, there's so much information out there, but yet a lot of people are hesitant and stick to comfortable easy let me exchange my time for money when you can exchange money for money and free up time one of my friends when she was 16 her parents sent her to barber school right she's 25 years old she travels more than i do she makes more money than i do and she didn't go to school right she doesn't work a nine to five she is 25 years old and she owns her own barber shop that's the lady that cuts your hair yeah the, the owner of the lady who cuts oh, okay cool, cool, cool. uh she owns the shop i go to right she, cause she went to statistician school and barber school. Like a trade, yeah. She got yeah. picked up a she trade. Was trade right? Yeah, yeah. If there's two books people need to read, Think and Grow Rich, and Seven Habits of Effective People. You read those two books, you'll be set for life. Just yeah. follow what those two books say. You wouldn't have to read anything else if you just had the basics of those two books. Right. You would be set up to make at least a hundred thousand a year. Yeah. At least. Easy. Easy. Just just following what they say in those books. And this goes back to, it's not about school anymore. No, it really isn't. You, not it, at all. It's about what do you need to learn to do it. Because most people who go to school, what do they do? They don't do anything. They they end up doing a job they didn't even go oh, to school Oh, you for. know what they end up with? Debt. <laughs> That's the number two thing. You so know what I mean? I, I read the statistic on it. Yeah. 80% of the people who go to school don't work the job that they went and got a major for. And the second thing is... They're paying more debt than you are, and they're not going on vacation because they're paying back Off that debt. debt. Yeah, like you're a hundred thousand dollars in debt with a nine to five job, and you got to buy a house, rent, feed yourself. But you know what I was already thinking about the other day. I'm like, okay, how, everybody's leaving college with some sort of debt, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and they're, they're afraid, like, oh no, I don't want to buy a house because I'm going to go more in debt, right? Mm-hmm. But then my, my my the way I think about it is, hey. I would go buy a house with either a the person that I hopefully I'm going to marry or you know my best friend, people that are going to stay in my life forever. You know, buy a house, pay it down, and what happens when you pay it down? You're gaining equity, right? And and mm-hmm. you wait on it for about a year or two, let it rise in equity, and then you do 
a cash out refinance. So you go and take the money that's been building up in your house, take it out and go pay your student debt or debts or credit cards or anything that you want. That's one way. Right. Let me tell you the other way. All right. I like this. I'm learning. Same concept. Buy a house at a young age. Rent all the rooms out to your friends. Damn, that's what I'm talking about. Go live with your girlfriend. Mm. They pay the first off off. You get the second house. Do it all over again. Now you're taking the rent from the first house. Place the rent from the second house. And rent. Put it on the second house. Wash and repeat. Yeah. I had a friend, because our when I first joined the military, yeah. we have a master chief. He told us to do this. I went and party. I didn't do it. My friend did it. How old is it now? 14 years later? He owns eight houses in Florida, has the lowest rent in Florida for charging people. Right. He makes 10000 a year. I mean, a month. I'm like 10000 a month. I don't know. I'm my bad. 10000 a month. That rent's be really, really low. Yeah. <laughs> Pays 10000 a month, and all the houses are paid off. He doesn't work. He just collects. He just collects. He he told me the key to a happy marriage is when you both work, don't work, because there's no, no there's stress. There's nothing to worry about. All my bills are paid. I go on vacation when I want to. You're, you're literally enjoying life. He takes one month to pay all the property taxes on all the houses. <laughs> then you got 11 months of $10,000 just to go do whatever, whatever you, you want to do. And you could set it up like that. I mean, it's just, you know, actually structuring it out, mm-hmm. knowing what you want to do, and aligning yourself with the people that could help you get there. He got out of the Navy in eight years. And when he got out, he owned four houses, paid off. Jesus Christ! Just by renting the rooms out to he took friends, his, he, shipmates. He took his the first house. He uh, paid off in four years, and already had another house online on deck. So by the end of his eight years, bam, 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 boom, four houses paid off. Owned eight houses. Jesus Christ! How old is he? How old am I? He was, I'm 35 now. So this eight years, I don't know. Like yo, he was like 30. Damn, At the 30 years and he owned all yeah. these houses, guys. This is not that far. I mean, I'm 25. Yeah. That's in five years. 14. No, he was 28. He's fucking three years, guys, compared to me. Because I'm 35. we both the same age. Yeah, we got that 14 years. And we've been 14 years now in the Navy. So when he got out in eight years, six years, about his that, he was yeah, 28, 29. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I think it's just like, you know, a lot of people just, it goes all in incongruency. I feel like, you know, whatever your life is style is mm-hmm. goes along with what type of goals you're trying to put your for yourself or reach, you know? So it, it really depends on what type of life you want to live. Some people are okay with just, you know, like the bare minimum, comfortability, changing their time for money. And that's okay. okay. If that's you're completely good with okay. That, that's fine. That's perfect. That's yeah. the life you want to live. And that's what I, I like to tell people. I'm not I'm not here to shove my information down your throat. I'm just here because, hey, I see you like this. And if I'm able to reach out to somebody that wants to know more, then, hey, that's what it's for. But if not, then keep doing what's the, good for you. That's how I tell people to stop living for money. Yeah. Because when you chase money, the people don't understand. Like, you're if you're chasing chasing money. You, there's too many things There's too many different ways To make money mm-hmm. So you're gonna keep Every time something gets hard You're gonna switch Yeah You're cool. We did it Yeah when It we was were, so many times Yeah, yeah right It was like, like what Three four years ago Yeah I mean you were trying to do Everything possible and We're like now nah, let's do investing Now nah, let's do a YouTube channel Now nah, let's do this And it's like we got How much stuff done Zero None. And then what are we doing now Everything <laughs> Everything we want to do And it takes time But it's all structure as well Yeah Cause it's like When I was, As soon as I stopped Doing everything And just focused on real estate Yeah Boom It's like it just clicked Everything just start taking off And I end up making Way more money in three months Than I made in three years Yeah And it's just because like, I feel like Entrepreneurship It's a roller coaster, Right mm-hmm. So you 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 have to have a base Is what I like to call it You know Like before yep. you can spread or your, your You mean take step Into something else You gotta have a solid foundation You know I call I like to call it the engine that's what's going to help you get enough money to start feeding into other buckets. So for us, thankfully, it's real estate. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. This business has given us enough opportunities for us to be able to create things that we want to do yeah. that is outside of just money. I tell people today, you want to listen to me? Research your famous, the famous person you look, look at. Uh, yeah. I looked at Kevin Hart and The Rock because at the time they were like the two biggest people starting from the bottom and blowing up. Damn, so you went and picked the smallest successful guy and then the tallest besides Damn, that's yeah, fucking the, awesome, man. You met right in the middle. And they the biggest they blew up faster than most people. Right. Like the rock went from wrestling. But that's what that's where he started it. But that, that was, was his foundation. His, his foundation. That was his yeah, one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, he built a team. Mm. And after he had the team, he did this. Was Kevin Brown wilding out? No. No. Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart was uh, stand up. He started out wilding out, right? 
No, 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 no. no. He started stand up. He, he went to Wall and Out after he blew up. Oh, really? Yeah. He, blew up. he did stand up for a long yeah, time. Yeah, he did stand up for a long time, and he was doing movies before that. Yeah, kind of. Oh, he, he was, was on Soul Plane. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, and that was. No, he was on Half Baked too. Yeah. Yeah, with Dave Chappelle. He was on Forty Year Old Version. Oh shit! You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like he had did movies with The Rock with the. When the Rockefeller was big, yeah, so yeah. he was in, he did he was the main character in what, what was it Paperboy, really? Yeah. Oh shit. So, and then that was when uh, who was who was that uh, Jay Z mm -hmm. and uh, Dame Dash was blowing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was just jumping right from there. here to here, and then he finally blew up in stand up, and blew up in movies, and then look, he got his own clothing line, started writing books. He actually started uh, took all of the Instagram people, and started an app. For making comedy, you know what he also does. Um, and I was looking at uh, his podcast with uh, with uh, Joe Rogan that I thought was fucking amazing. He's mm -hmm. going back into the communities in Philly, and you know, partnering up. I think it was with uh, Chase or Bank of America to provide more financial information for you know low low end communities, people that don't know much stuff about that. Which is, I think, is great because you know, there's. I mean, you can reach a level of success where you you accomplished everything like yeah. those people do. But then what do you do once you get to that point and you reach every milestone that you set for yourself? Like, you got to find something to give you that, you know, that, that fulfillment again. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I, this is what I try to tell people. Like, and I think that's amazing what he's a, doing. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. there's a lot of things you don't know that people are doing because it's not, yeah. like you said, it's not a headline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. T.I., he went and bought a whole community, Dude, like uh, 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 real estate, and then gave dope. back to the community. He makes money, all that. He owns chains of uh, restaurants. Yeah. Nobody knows about that. Y'all y'all knows he makes music and he has a podcast. You know what I mean? And all of us, hey, he's a game member or whatever. You know, yeah. headlines. 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 Jail and all that yeah. Stuff. yeah. yeah like but no, they give back to the community. Uh, well, I, people probably know this one because they put it, put it on Instagram when he went into uh, the stores during Christmas and just bought everybody's stuff in the store. I think when people do stuff like that, I think that's fucking amazing. And I hope I, to, at one point in my life, am able to be in that position. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I just want to go into the Walmart over here because we live by two yeah. of the and be like, hey. Yo, what do you want? You know what I mean? Or just not even like, you know, wait, pay for all my stuff and be like, hey, everybody behind me, they're good. It's all on me. Yeah, like, yo, get, just keep, because he, he just stood at the register and he's like, yo, keep them going. Let's go. You think you could tax write that off? Yeah. No, I, oh, no, they changed taxes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking, I'm like, that. I've been doing the same thing and then just write You off. can. It's how you label it in your taxes. Now, this is what people don't understand. If you're collecting a refund check, you're in the wrong tax bracket. You're in the wrong tax bracket if you collect a refund check. If you owe taxes, I'm probably making more money than you. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you get in a refund check, you're not making enough money. And that's life. actually like, you know, something that I've been planning and have in the works is, uh, you know, our generation doesn't know much. Well, in school, let's take it a step back. In school, we didn't get taught how to do taxes. We didn't get taught how to buy a house. They can't. You would, oh, really? The, the, they could teach you, but it will, the whole structure will fall apart. You know what I mean? Exactly, because they're not teaching you how to just go into a job to work for somebody else to trade your time for money. Yeah, because if, if everybody knew how to make money... Then who would do those jobs? Nobody. nobody. <laughs> they can't teach in the school. People Jesus be like, they don't teach this in school. They can't. No, but that's why I'm working on a workshop, bro, where you know we're going to take them step by step how to budget, how to do the taxes, how to apply for a mortgage, mm -hmm. how to look for houses, and how to have personal finances yep. you know what i mean because i feel that's what we're missing bro you know before we're, we're all, i'm always saying like no buy a house buy a house but then i, I started thinking i'm like maybe they do want to buy a house they just don't know how to get there and getting getting knowing how to get there takes you know starting at square one mm -hmm. and going step by step teaching by you step. how to fix your credit you know you how exactly, money really works exactly who's going to teach how to budget uh, I don't know. I'm still working on somebody. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, no, no, I mean, I do mortgages, maybe, bro. Yeah, 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 I know. Huh? Maybe the guy sitting here talking right now. You know what I mean? The guy who goes on vacation every but, three months. But what I want to do is, like, you know, I want to be able to do uh, at least, you know, like once a month, bring in different industry people. Like, you know, one month will be us, a tax person, a financial planner. Boom. Yeah, that, Next month, do a different setup with still, you know, bam, I'm always leading it so that, you know, we're able to provide that value for the, the millennials, bro. That's literally who it is for. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why my kids are going to read those two books. And I remember you were telling me that the yeah. other day. As soon like, as they hit high anything. school, and before in high school, you have to do a book report yeah. every year on these two books. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that I was just like, you know what? That's fucking a great way to look at things because you know what? Like, yeah, they're going to teach you information that you need to know in school, mm -hmm. but I'm going to teach you information that you're going to need to know in life. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? No, school doesn't teach you about life. No, it's, school teaches you how to stay organized, structured, and follow directions. School teaches you how to stay broke. Fuck, bro. This guy <laughs> it teaches you how to work a nine to five. And work for somebody else. So you can time. work for my kids in the future. Because oh, yeah, I'm building a legacy. Yeah, oh, yeah. So speaking about the legacy, bro, what mm-hmm. is your legacy and what do you wish to accomplish? Uh, shoot. A lot of people think I just want to be rich. I don't. I just want to make sure I have options. Yeah. I want my kids to be able to go do the things that they want to do, to go see the world because the world is beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. Who doesn't want to go to Paris, go to Spain, go to uh, Fiji? Yeah. Go to uh, Bora Bora. Bora Bora. The, the newest one is uh, everybody's going to Bali. Oh, Bali. yeah. A lot of people are up in I'm that. seeing people on Bali all over the Facebook now. It's like, yo, and then it's like, they got the vacation apps, and you just see these crazy pictures. Mm. Like, you see Aquaman? Uh, yeah, I did. All the places that they were there. Yeah, like, fire. Yeah, like, I just want to go to that spot where they was going to kiss, and the place blew up. <laughs> like, because it just looked good. I want to go to Venice, where you can just you ride around in boats. Yeah, Like, a right, city of boats. Italy, yeah. Yeah, like, why wouldn't you want to do that line? And then, you know, like, I, I haven't had the opportunity to travel much, but mm-hmm. from, you know, from Will, from people that have traveled, you know, it's crazy what they tell me and the feedback that they say. You know, they're like, dude, you, you, we live in a bubble in the United States. You know, there's so much more out there. There's so much perspective. Yo, there's so much things that you need to experience that when you come home, you'll understand more. Yo, my second home is Japan. Yeah, I know it is. Like, I got, like, I know I got my is. tattoo from I know you Japan. Got I go Japan. to Japan, like, once a dude, year. Dude, we know you have a Japan... <laughs> <laughs> Tramp stamp on your lower back. Uh, you know, saying bend it over. <laughs> <laughs> Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. No, but being in the military taught me that yo, there's such a broader aspect of mm. life. Um, I actually like being overseas more. Yeah, because there are less races. It's, it's different. It's different than in the United States where you're labeled for a certain thing. Uh, there you're just, la- it's different when you're labeled on a broader aspect. I'm only labeled as an American over there. Here, I'm labeled more statistically. So, okay. it affects you more. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off that. So mm-hmm. you go to any other country outside of the United States, right? <laughs> Everyone in Mexico is Mexican, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone in China is Chinese. Mm-hmm. Everyone in Japan is Japanese, right? Mm-hmm. But in the United States, you're black He's whack and now I'm Mexican. He's from Shaker. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Shaker, that's why. <laughs> yeah, so actually my first time on deployment, 2006, we went to Portugal. Okay. The guy in Portugal, we walking around, we got lost, we were asking for help. They don't like Americans. Nope. So mm. when we walked up, they threw up an X. No, no, no. He looked in the back. I was the only black guy and I had my Hispanic friend. The guy looked over and was like, you, you're black. And I'm like, uh. Yeah, what's up? Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Got what's problem? Up? What's going on? <laughs> like, you know, so I'm from the United States. You you talk to me like that, it might be a problem. Yeah. And he's like. Back from Shaker where I'm from. Uh, Maple Heights, get it right. That douche is from Shaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was like, you know Tupac? Yeah. Yeah. You uh, like hip hop? You- like, dude, Duh. I'm black. Duh. And you come to my club, come to my club, hang out with me. Yo, I'm looking at my friend like, look. Hey, y'all catch y'all later. (laughs) Yo, you got my back if anything go down. Yeah, I got you. uh, Portugal, they speak uh, a Latin uh, uh, Spanish dialect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not 100%, but if you speak Spanish, you can can make out. Yeah, you can pick up most of the words and understand what's going on. So my friend was the translator for most of the spot, but he spoke a little bit of English. We went and hung out. Dude, this bro brought girls, picked us up, took us over to, he owned the club. We in VIP just because I was black. It was the first time I was like, being overseas, being black overseas is amazing. (laughs) Yeah, like, it's the first time I was, you know, like, you know, worshiped for being black. Yo, you go to Italy, the blacker the better. Wait, were you on this? Well, we're going to Italy. If you go to Italy, you, if you... Blacker than me, like I'm talking about charcoal, purple, black. They will love you. The blacker you are, the better in Italy. Really? Yeah. So it's uh, like, yo. I'm in the wrong fucking and, country. That's so weird. Yo, like in Japan, it's it's not about Ooh. race. It's more about, you know how here is who you know? Yeah. Over there is what you know. Well, yeah, the that's top, where they come and take off. The top and... DJ asked me to DJ with him. I'm, this is when I first started DJing. Right. And he was like, come DJ with me. I'm like, yo, like straight up, I just started. Like, I ain't, I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. I ain't going to act like I blew up. He's like, no, it doesn't matter. 
Come DJ with me. I show you some things. I teach you some things. You say that to somebody out here. Uh, Nine times out of ten, they already think that the shit. Yeah, they don't need to learn anything. anything. I will teach you if anything. Yeah, they don't want you there because you don't know nothing. If you don't already know, they don't want you. Right, right, right. Over there is what do you know and are you respectable? That's why I like yo. Any, everywhere in a different country, it's just been a different experience. It's just been great. Like go see the world. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that's where you get more perspective. You come back home and you're like, yo, like. Things are more set into place. Mm-hmm. Kind of have a broader idea of what's going on in life and in the world for that it, matter. Like you said, and then it'll make you realize, like, yo, like, what do you got here? Like, it just brings a better aspect of your life. To yeah, you. I get you be a little bit more grateful, a little mm-hmm. bit more, you know, aware of your surroundings, pick up on certain things. Because, you know, we have it good here. Like, no doubt we have a good. We probably have the best, you know. No, no lie. No lie. No lie. Yeah, like if no we lie. actually took advantage of what's going on here, Shit, you have bro. the best. Yeah, but everybody's so focused on headlines. <laughs> so, bro, you have a YouTube channel, bro. And it was one of the things that we wanted to do back, you know, back like two, three, three, four years ago. Yeah. You know, where are you with that, bro? And I've seen you go to like different restaurants and stuff like that. I mean, I've actually done a challenge with you that I almost like, you know, took my own life. Oh, <laughs> they actually wrote us back and they said that they hoped that you were okay. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah, no way. Like, I'll show you the comment. It's like, we hope Brian's okay. Our fire sauce is no joke. I'm going to go back and be like, yo, hey, guys, I'm the guy. No, yeah, they, they, they left a comment on, on, the, on the video. That's awesome. Uh, Shout so, out uh, Cross Street Chicken. Yes, Cross Street Chicken and Beer. One of the uh, best spots out there for uh, wings and try the fire sauce. Brian can't handle it, but it's pretty good. Whatever. I just put on a good show. He needs some milk. I needed more than milk. I just needed fucking like a new tongue, taste buds, and freaking. I've never been so spiced up in Yo, my I've life. I've never bro. seen anybody in the fetal position bro, before. Bro, I was lightheaded. Really? I was lightheaded, bro. I literally thought I was going to faint. Oh. Yeah. I'll do it again, though. Right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but SoCal Living. Yeah. So I, I, um, what you'll find there are tips on real estate and just going through the life experience of San Diego, you know, mm-hmm. South, South Cal- California. Yeah, because uh, eventually I hope to take uh, go to some of the food spots up in LA. Like I just seen a post yesterday. I got the, the the chicken spot. We need to go try out and everything. You gotta actually still take me to Coco's. You haven't been to Coco's? Never, bro. We go to Spring. You know why? Why they come to San Diego? Oh fuck yeah! Yes, Coco's yeah. Curry. I just actually yeah, just yeah. went last Thursday with my little sister. Yeah, that's how I remember you telling me. Yeah, I was like, yeah. motherfucker. Oh know. yeah, Cur- Coco's and Irvine. Like if you don't want to wait to the Spring, go to Coco's and Irvine. Is Japanese curry and some of the best curry ever. Did you guys see how he rolled his eyes when he said that? That's hey, how you know it's fire. No, <laughs> it's, it's the closest thing you'll get to the Japanese one, and it's fire. All right, so we're going to get into my favorite part of the podcast. It's called the lightning round. These Uh-oh. are a set of questions that I don't know, you don't know, mm-hmm. Marcos knows. It could literally be anything, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go. Question number one. Do you dance crazy when no one else is looking? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I do. I cannot imagine I mean, you, bro. You're pretty fucking big. <laughs> yo, I be doing bachata at home. I be practicing salsa. And then sometimes I be trying to do uh, the, the the switch, the, the dance the uh, Jabberwockies do for the bop. Uh, yeah. It's called the switch. Not, not 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 that one, but like when they do the, the whip with the arm. Yeah. Hey, should play that tongue in that. All right, question number two. Would you rather have a permanently clogged nose or a piece of green food always stuck in your teeth? A piece of green food stuck in my teeth. Because it always happens. when I wake up. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, man, good vegetables for you. Yeah, I know, right? And eggs that stinks up the whole office. Yo, I'm getting healthy. You should dry it, man. Yeah, I'll let you know. All right, when, when you're old, what do you think children will ask you to tell stories about? My vacations, <laughs> especially the Portugal one. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> what are the mo- uh, what are you most likely to stay up all night think- talking about? Uh, you talking about like, um, shoot, just talking to girls. I don't know anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, good conversation with the bros, yeah, long no. conversation with the. Girl, you know, actually, not girl. gonna say any names. Like, uh, two of my buddies uh, the other day told me they're like, Yeah, bro, uh, I stayed on the phone last night with the girl till like 5 a.m. Yeah, I haven't done that. And I was like, Damn, what are we in middle school again? Yo, like, you see those memes? Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. be like in different spots of the house for no reason laid up somewhere. That's, <laughs> hey, that's y'all, you're like, So, so what if we had like three kids and uh, you know, we've yeah. been a family? <laughs> like, just got the, the laundry basket on your feet up in the air for no reason, <laughs> but it'd be like that. Yeah, you just be caught up in the conversation. The conversation be that damn good. That's the only time you catch me staying up like if, if any other time if it's like one of my dudes i'm going to bed i gotta get up at three in the morning and hit the gym there it is ladies and 
gentlemen. Where do you where do you not mind waiting? I hate waiting everywhere. I hate being in traffic. I hate being in lines. Oh, I hate traffic Dude, and lines with a passion. When the Popeye's chicken sandwich came out, Jesus. I walked in. I seen the line. I walked out. That's how I am, bro. Like you know, like I could want something so bad, but if there's gonna be a long wait, I'm out. I'd Don't, rather not even wait. Coco's is the only place you'll catch me waiting, and I'll probably wait with you. Yeah, because they got like a 15 minute wait. Now I'll wait there. A little side story. That's why I don't really online shop. Because That's I want my stuff now. Like, I am all brick and mortar. Like, I want to go in, pay for my shit, get it, and do whatever the fuck I want with it. I don't like waiting a week or two days. That, yeah. Even if it's an overnight delivery, I'm still anxious. Okay, <laughs> you talking about waiting. I'll wait for online shopping because I don't like going to the store to wait in the line. So See, but I'd rather <laughs> wait... 10 to 15 minutes at line, then wait two to three business days. I, I got prime. I wait one day. Okay. Well, that's why <laughs> me and you get along because we would say yes to everything if we didn't. Yeah. All right. So what is a baby whale called? A baby whale? <laughs> I don't know. A baby whale. The answer's right there, bro. I know, but hold on. What do you what do you pull when you play basketball all the time? A groin? Your calf. Your calf. Who pulls a calf playing basketball? A horrible fucking. Uh, <laughs> but I've never. Heard. It happened one time. Yo, okay. You, you pulled your calf? Like, what? That has never happened. Pulled a hamstring. Anyways, next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rap group Criss Cross was known for. Jump, jump. No. Wearing clothes no. backwards. You have the, what? He said it right here. It had to be those two. Yeah, Chris to- Cross is known for the song "Jump, Jump" and wear your clothes backwards. Yeah, that was it. All right, next question. Yeah, that was make cool. sure you read the, the, the options. Well, he didn't. He didn't let me. He gets straight right one to it. He's like fucking D. No, it couldn't have been nothing else. Yeah, I, was, I was excited. I like Chris Cross. All right, here it goes. What is the number one song of 1999 according to the Billboard Hot 100? 99. Brian, there's options. I don't need options Hold for this on. one. Yeah, yeah. All right, I was gonna give him free time because obviously last time he knew it. Uh, all right, option number one, No Scrubs by TLC. Possibly. B, Where My Girl's At by 702. Mm-mm. C, Believe by Cher. And D, Living La Vida Loca by Ricky Martin. It got to be Cher or TLC. I'm going to go with TLC. I'm going to go with Cher, bro. Believe, bro. You should have believed in your first <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be one of them. All right. If you could switch lives with someone, and it can't be me, bro, who mm. would it be and why? If I had to switch lives with somebody, mm, The Rock. Ooh, that's a good one, bro. He's like fucking dope. Yo, yo, he blew up muscles everywhere. I'm trying to get big like that. Like You paid and everybody loves you. Yeah, nobody can make The Rock look smaller besides his yeah, 2003 like, version of himself. Like everybody <laughs> look like you never hear anybody saying nothing bad about Dwayne The Rock. You know ever, bro. Ever, never. ever, yeah. ever. Yeah, well, you're right. All right, bro. We're getting here to the last question of the day. And I'm going to go ahead and say the, say the question. You're going to repeat after me and fill in the blanks. Okay. okay? My name is Blank, and I get my energy from? My name is Blank, and I... <laughs> I was repeating after him. You said repeat after yeah, him. I was said repeat after me and fill in the blanks. This was straight up said. My name is Blank. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was episode three. <laughs> He's Blank and he gets his energy from Blank. <laughs> I my name is my name is Eric Harris and I get my energy from. With the energy it is with Celsius heat. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's been episode 31. Thank you, Eric Harris, for stopping by. Like always, if you haven't followed or subscribed onto YouTube, Spotify, and Apple, make sure you go over to our profile, hit the links, follow us, tell all your friends, tell your mom, tell your tia, tell your girlfriend, tell your ex girlfriend, shit, fuck it, tell everybody. Best podcast in the world, episode 32. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric, thank you for coming by. We Thanks, out. Man. Dude just said Celsius heat. <laughs> Celsius, bro. He said Celsius heat. Out of every source, my family, my work ethic, my group, like uh, oh, Celsius, Celsius heat. heat. Y'all said yeah. energy. I wasn't thinking about a reason why. <laughs> I'm uh-huh. like, what? <laughs> that was good, Celsius heat. I just had one. <laughs> Woo.